Hello, hi, this is Dr. Michael Watson from Arizona Jaw Surgery, here to talk briefly about idiopathic condylar resorption. Um, again, I want to emphasize this is brief and not all encompassing. If you would like more information, please go to our website, azjawsurgery.com, or if interested, call us to schedule a in-person or virtual consultation, consultation via telehealth, uh, from which we see people all over the country and even other countries for this condition. So it's something we're fairly familiar with and, and deal with fairly often and want to kind of pass along some of our knowledge and understanding of this to you guys. So first and foremost, well, what are we talking about when we're talking about ICR? So idiopathic condylar resorption essentially is a destructive or resorptive condition of the mandibular condyles for which we don't really understand why it's occurring. That's what makes it idiopathic. Typically, this is presenting in adolescent females, sometimes called cheerleader syndrome for this reason. Um, it typically will cause an anterior open bite or mandibular asymmetry, a convex facial profile, which will show you sometimes pain, but not always. It's not required that this be painful, but does sometimes include pain for patients. And then we know some things that tend to be associated with it or possible triggers or causes or essentially maybe the straw that broke the camel's back that sets things in motion for ICR. And some of those being orthodontic and, and orthognathic surgical treatments, prolonged dental treatment where your mouth is open for an extended period of time, wisdom teeth removal. Um, there's even thought to be some hormonal components, both with regards to pregnancy, menstruation, and other things uh, that can potentially be involved with this. Well, what does it look like? You know, when we talk about an anterior open bite, what we essentially mean is that the anterior or front teeth no longer touch. And so as you see here, only the back teeth are touching, uh, which is not an ideal situation, both aesthetically, uh, from an airway perspective, from an overall sharing the burden of force on your teeth. It is not a good idea to, instead of having, you know, 20 to 32 teeth, sharing force now only on a few teeth, which can lead to dental trauma, fractures, cracks, need for other treatment uh, in this regard. Plus, functionally just cannot chew very well uh, with this in place. On the actual condyles, the condyles themselves, what can this look like? So here on the left, normal-ish condyle, a kind of ovoid shaped, a good cortical smooth outline, meaning you can almost kind of trace it and it's somewhat smooth and regular uh, compared to here where there's very little volume. You can see how large this is versus this, which has been destructed how flat this is instead of this feel, fitting almost like a ball and socket within the joint this has now been degraded eroded flattened this too not a normal healthy looking joint active inflammation and degradation sometimes will form what we call subchondral cysts these little black circular like lesions and again look how irregular the bone looks it is not rounded and smooth and ovoid it is very much irregular uh, showing an active destructive process there. Well, so how do we go about diagnosing this if we don't know what causes it? And it's essentially two steps. You have to have the signs, symptoms, presentation of ICR, and then we have to kind of essentially rule everything else out, which is often systemic arthritic conditions, trauma, typical TMJ disease, benign tumors, uh, other things that we have to essentially say, hey, look, it doesn't seem as if these are there, so this is likely ICR. And the other point to make, though, is sometimes that diagnosis, while we always want to be operating under a confidence of what the diagnosis is, sometimes it almost becomes semantics in the sense that if you have the presentation of ICR, even if it's not quote-unquote ICR, we're essentially treating them the same way. The risks of not treating them or treating them remain somewhat regardless of the cause. Now, if there's systemic arthritic conditions that can be addressed or that we need to know so that other joints aren't affected, that of course comes into play when we're dealing with things like this. And then when we're deciding to treat ICR, what, how do we kind of come to our thought process or what decision-making factors come into play? And it essentially is, well, how substantial is the resorption and what is the result of it? So if this is caught early, we treat that differently than potentially if we're already seeing significant open bite and malocclusion. Function itself also comes into play. So if your joint is functional and it's destroyed, then it doesn't necessarily have to be treated in any way. There's some caveats to that, but if you're functional, pain-free, and we can go forward and treat it other ways, that's always on the table. 
And then the, the patient preference as well as understanding is, is to me the most critical aspect of this. And one of the key components that we can't say enough is that unless the joints are replaced in ICR with a prosthetic, the patient will forever, I'm going to say that again, forever be at risk of recurrence or progression, reactivation, or the need for joint replacement in the future. So if you choose to not have total joint replacement with substantial ICR, you run the risk of needing it the rest of your life. Now, we could figure this out in the next few years. We could develop new treatments. So there's a case to be made for delaying joint replacement if you're functional and pain-free in that regard as, hey, maybe 10 years from now, we have more understanding and options and we could have avoided uh, doing total joint replacement. Nothing wrong with that line of thought as long as there's an understanding of the current situation, which is anything short of joint replacement, you are at risk of needing it in the future. And by the future, we mean the future. It could be a week, a month, a year, a decade. It could be postmenopausal for females, as we talked about from the hormonal component. So in actuality, functionally, how do we treat it? And there's two schools of thought here for patient options. And the first is, hey, if the condyles are just degrading, at some point they're going to go away or be degraded to the point where there's nothing left to degrade. And we can use that point to treat going forward. If the patient doesn't have a lot of pain, the patient's joints are functional, and it can't worsen, maybe we treat them with traditional orthodontics, orthognathic surgery, we avoid joint replacement. Not an unreasonable school of thought, completely reasonable, again, based off patient preferences. But remember, again, orthodontics, orthognathic surgery, dental treatment, other things are known to trigger ICR, recurrence, activation, or if you've never even had it, they could be what actually starts it. So you just have to be aware of that risk. And if you are, it's a completely reasonable thing to undertake. The second option is total joint replacement. And that's where we take out your pathologic joints. They're gone. So they can no longer degrade. They can no longer reactivate. They can no longer be unstable because you have metal and plastic there. And metal and plastic don't resorb. Metal and plastic don't get attacked uh, by your own tissues. They don't get inflammation in that regard. So it's a much more definitive treatment, which is crucial to understand. It doesn't mean it has to be done, but it is very definitive. Some of the pros and cons of this, and every individual patient will have their own beyond this, but some that we like to emphasize to patients is for option one, letting it burn out, you do get to keep your natural tissue and anatomy instead of a prosthetic. Sounds good and positive, of course. And you're, of course, avoiding a larger surgery and any risks that come along with it. And there are risks, and it's not a small thing to undertake. So you do have to kind of keep that in perspective. The potential cons are, well, hey, yeah, we've kept your normal anatomy. Great. But, well, that anatomy is not pristine. We're not talking about typical, normal, healthy joints and comparing them to prosthetics. We're usually talking about severely destructed, damaged joints which now maybe aren't functional, but that's a determination that has to, to be made. And then again, we're now going to subject you, if you have malocclusion and other things, to the very things that would potentially reactivate it. Again, orthognathic surgery, orthodontics. So you're always at risk for reactivation and destruction. So you could take the approach of, I want to do everything I can to avoid joint replacement and spend a lot of time, energy, effort, money, on orthodontics, orthodontic surgery, only to then end up doing it anyway. So that just has to be something patients are aware of. Second option of total joint replacement, the pros are, well, again, it's definitive. Metal and plastic, very stable, and don't progress. Uh, it also, in one procedure, will allow treatment of the ICR so the damaged condyles are addressed and any of the malocclusion. So usually you would have any orthognathic surgery that would be combined with ICR surgery, joint replacement, all at one surgery. So you go to sleep, you wake up, your joints are gone, you have prosthetics, your bite occlusion is in a better place, one and done uh, kind of thing. Downsides would be it's not a small procedure. It's a large surgery with a large recovery. You have to plan your life around this. It's not something you walk in the hospital, walk out a few hours later, and you're normal uh, immediately. There's a lot that comes in, comes along with it that has to be prepped and planned for. And then, you know, potential cons, and I would almost also list this under a pro, is we still don't fully know how long these joints will last, which sounds negative, but almost as a positive, because we do have about 30 years of data on these that shows we're not rampantly taking these things out 
due to them failing from a mechanical standpoint. Um, so they may last you the rest of your life. You might have to have them replaced two, three times. We, we don't know. In some patients, they might last 10 years. Some might last 60, but we've only had them for a little over 30 years. But those that we followed from that time frame are holding up fairly well with you know, a reasonable expectation that others will continue to do so. This again, as I said before, I feel like is the most important aspect of this, the patient's preference themselves. So some people for their own psyche would feel better. And they have told me, if I go through all the other treatment and I know that I need joint replacement after that, if I've exhausted all the other options and it comes to needing joint replacement, for my own psyche, that will make me feel better. I will accept the decision much better. I will sleep better at night knowing that I did that. Perfectly fine. Again, as long as the patient understands, that is not unreasonable in the least. Other people would say, I'm done. I'm tired of dealing with this. I don't want to go through treatment, potentially pain and reactivation, or 20 years from now having to do it anyways. Let's treat it. Let's do it one time. Let's be done. Let's replace the joints. I understand it's a big undertaking, but it's one single undertaking for which I know I'm not going to have to look over my shoulder or worry that the next time I go see my dentist that they're going to say, hey, it looks like your condyles are looking a little strange. We need to, to have you checked for reactivation of your ICR. The peace of mind that comes from that, other people would prefer that. And again, both are equally reasonable options as long as there's understanding, documentation from the providers, the patient. And then we move forward. And so hopefully that's helpful in kind of helping understand ICR. Again, more information on our website at azjawsurgery.com. We're here to help. We see this all the time. Happy to be a resource for you um, in person, virtual consultations in any way we can. Thanks for your time. Take care.